Welcome back. Uh, I'm Lucy Arish and this is uh, I-24 News one on one. Last night, Germany welcomed Angela Merkel as their chancellor for the third time after her win during last night's election. Uh, with me in the studio tonight is Mr. Moshe Zimmerman, Zimmerman uh, director of the Richard Kovner uh, Minerva Center for German History at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming here. Good evening. It was a big night for Chancellor Angela Merkel last night. For the third time. <clears throat> First of all, it is the third time. Secondly, she won more than 40%. Uh, she was back where her party was about uh, 12 or 16 years ago. Last time, she got only 34%. Uh, the party shrank a bit. Now she is where the big parties have to be in Germany with more than 40%, and this is why she was so uh, happy about the results yesterday. What is so special in this character, in Angela Merkel's character? I think uh, the discrepancy between her looks and her power, because she is a very powerful politician. She knows exactly how to use power in politics, in international politics, in internal politics, but she looks like a good, uh, German mother, uh, unoffensive, and uh, this is why she's so special in politics. Everybody who knows her as a politician knows that she's very resolute and she knows how to come to uh, uh, important decisions, and this is what she did in the last eight years and even before, and this is what she's expected to do in the next four years. Uh, would we Can we define her as uh, the new uh, Iron Woman? Well, this is a nickname given because uh, the Germans had already an Iron Chancellor, uh, Bismarck, and now they have a woman uh, who is an Iron Chancellor, so uh, she's nicknamed the uh, Eiserne Kanzlerin in Germany. But I think this uh, kind of uh, description coming to do something with iron or with metal is, uh, I think, improper. She is a very resolute, a very clever uh, politician, and this is, uh, this is, I think, what uh, should be known about her. Uh, like you said, she brought Germany in a clever way uh, to a situation where we can say, and everybody's saying, that Germany uh, right now is the biggest economy in Europe. Um, and this is not something in nowadays that we know that the economic situation is deteriorating in the rest of the world. Uh, she managed to do some really smart dis decisions uh, during uh, uh, her uh, during the time that she is in position. Well, she didn't do it alone. She has a very good finance minister from her own party, who is going along with her, uh, thinking the same way as she does. But the one thing one has to uh, acknowledge that. Uh, Germany, other than the southern part of uh, Europe and even uh, Italy and uh, France, is a strong economy, even though the crisis for Europe was a very severe one. So they survived the crisis, they managed uh, to go on, they managed to grow, uh, and they managed uh, also to uh, keep the whole Union, the European Union, together. This is something. Uh, which is uh, very impressive. And of course, looking at it as an historian, it is all the more impressive because what uh, Germany didn't do uh, with the might of its uh, power, military power in the past, they are doing now. They are ruling practically Europe. They are the motor uh, of the European engine or of the uh, European uh, car. And uh, this is something uh, which is accepted by the Europeans. It's not uh, like uh, 50 or 100 years ago when uh, German dominance or German hegemony in Europe was something which the other couldn't accept. So um, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about the job that she's going to have in the next uh, months or next two weeks to uh, create the new government because it's not going to be easy this time for her. There are no uh, uh, alternatives, or the number of alternatives is very small. Uh, she can't do it alone, uh, because then she'll be in a minority government. 
she has to look for a partner. There are only two partners which uh, may uh, be uh, accepted by, uh, by the German public, the Social Democrats or the Greens. They already had, or she had already, a coalition with the Social Democrats between uh, 2005 and 2009. This is a very successful, or it was a very successful coalition. It could go on. Uh, the Social Democrats are not very eager to do it because they know that at the end of such a coalition, they are going to lose votes in the uh, next elections. Then they have the other alternative, which they didn't try yet, uh, the coalition with the Greens. They tried it on state level, lender. Uh, level in Hamburg, for instance, and it was very successful. So they may do it again on the national uh, level. These are the two alternatives. One thing that uh, is uh, impossible under uh, the present conditions in Germany is any coalition with the uh, leftist party, Die Linke, because they are the heirs of the previous communist party of the Eastern German state. This is something which is a total no-no in German politics. And the Social Democrats, together with the Greens, are not going to have a coalition with those linker, with the left, even though they may get a majority, because it is, as I said, a no-no in German politics. You can't do national politics with the linker, which are very much anti-European, uh, not only anti-capitalist, and not only uh, anti-West uh, uh, Germany. What does it mean in the interior uh, perspective, in the interior uh, policy inside Germany? Is it going to change? It's not uh, going to change because the policy of uh, Angela Merkel was from the start to uh, accept ingredients of the ideologies of the partners. So even though they are called the Christian Democratic Party and not the Social Democratic Party, they accepted many ideas coming from the Social Democrats. They accepted many ideas coming from the Greens. For instance, uh, right after the uh, last uh, elections, she, Merkel, decided to shut down the, uh, uh, the nuclear uh, power works because of the uh, catastrophe in uh, Fukushima. She went along with the basic idea of the Greens. Uh, this is the way she is uh, doing politics, and this is why I'm not expecting her to make uh, uh, a great change, either together with the Social Democrats or with the Greens in the, uh, in the next future. So the Free Democrats, uh, uh, the party, uh, won, won yesterday only 15%. It was a big fall uh, from the last uh, election that were in uh, well, 5 percent. The Liberal Party, FDP, yes. which is a party that has a very long tradition in Germany, not only since uh, 1949, but also before 1933, it, the history of the democratic uh, German party, uh, had to uh, accept the fact that uh, they lost. They didn't get even the 5%, and they are out of the Bundestag, out of the national uh, parliament. They were the uh, partners of uh, Angela Merkel until uh, now. Uh, there were problems because they were uh, <coughs> a bit too liberal, too open, too capitalistic uh, for the German public, and this is why I think it will be even easier for Merkel to govern together with the Social Democrats again, or with the Greens. Uh, the uh, Free Democrats or the uh, Liberals in uh, Germany uh, were in favor of uh, reducing taxes, of course, which they couldn't do in uh, Germany. The general public is against this uh, kind of a move. They are in favor of more state, of more welfare state. And uh, this is why I think it will be, again, easier for America to have uh, a government together with either Social Democrats or Greens. So let's talk about a little bit about uh, the Israel-German uh, relations. Um, uh, what are we expected to see the same or maybe even tighter relations uh, between Israel and Germany? Or it's going to stay or getting better or worse? 
Well, foreign policy is made by uh, Merkel. It doesn't matter whether it is uh, Westerwelle, who is now out of office, or somebody of the Social Democratic Party. She is the one who, de who decides about the general uh, direction of the uh, foreign policy. Uh, and uh, this is not going to change. She has a very uh, deep commitment to the existence of Israel. She declared Israel to be a part of German Staatsraison, state reason of uh, Germany, which is really uh, very uh, uh, reassuring for any Israeli uh, government. But on the other hand, uh, she is not going uh, to accept every policy that uh, is made by the Israeli right wing. She is not in favor of uh, continuing the uh, occupation of uh, the West Bank. She is not in favor of the uh, settlements and uh, widening the settlements in the West Bank. So if the Israeli government expects her to accept uh, without any opposition any kind of uh, political move uh, made by the Israeli government, then uh, they are going to be a bit disappointed also in the future. I have to say that in the last, uh, 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 what happened in Syria and the civil war that happened in Syria, we heard a lot about Britain and we heard a lot about France, but we didn't hear a lot from Germany. We didn't hear a strong statement from Germany taking actually a stand on the subject and saying, okay, we're getting in there. First of all, the Germans are against military intervention. The German public is a very pacifist one, and everything that has to do with the army is uh, something which is, uh, uh, brings about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, negative reactions from uh, the German public. So this is why they are not uh, in favor of intervention or supporting Obama. Because of the and so history, and so of course. And the other thing is, that the German policy is uh, talking softly, and uh, they are not carrying a big stick. Yeah, but, but, but uh, we they know the, are the, the very much in the business. I am sure, as far as I know, that the uh, possibility to bring Putin and Obama together to talk about the situation in Syria was very much an initiative of the German foreign policy. They tried to do it already during the G20 uh, meeting. They succeeded two or three days later. So this is where the German foreign policy is. They are very much in international politics. They are not very outspoken, and they are not very dramatic about it's, it's, it. It's, it's, it's strange that you're saying that they are not very dramatic about it, because history, you know, as we know history, the use of uh, gas and, you know, the Holocaust, it's something that should make them more sensitive about the subject. Because they are so sensitive, they are so hesitant about uh, making big, uh, big speeches. Uh, they do not uh, want to uh, create the impression that they are back again where they lost in the year 1945. They are very much interested in a peaceful solution for nearly every crisis uh, in the world, especially here in the Middle East. The uh, knowledge of the past and uh, the uh, responsibility which is uh, put on Germany of the present because of this past is playing a very big role in German politics. So just because they know the history of the Holocaust, the history of National Socialism, the history of the Second World War, they are doing the utmost in order to, uh, to uh, stop any crisis short of becoming a war or an um, uh, armed conflict. Before we finish this interview, uh, in one sentence, uh, what is the biggest challenge that Angela Merkel has in the next few days or in this candidacy? Well, it might uh, uh, seem curious. The biggest channel, uh, challenge is the uh, special fee uh, to be paid uh, for uh, riding through Germany's uh, autobahn. Uh, highways. This is a matter of a conflict between her and her partner from the Bavarian uh, part, uh, CSU. The guy from the CSU is in favor of uh, Ausländer, of foreigners, paying this tax. 
and she is against it. So this is, the, uh, I think, the biggest problem that she has to face at the moment. Uh, this shows uh, in what situation Germany is at the moment. They are not confronted with a big war, with a big economic crisis. This is something they can handle. The problem that they have is whether to find those foreigners driving through the highways of Germany or not. Well, we can say that it's little Swiss. <laughs> it's, a Swiss. it's a big Swiss. It's a big Swiss. Mr. Uh, Zimmelmann, thank you very much for this insight about Germany, and thank you very much for your knowledge and coming here to the studio. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. And we will be here tomorrow at the same time, same place, and from the Jaffa port. Have a great night. Thank you.